because of supply and demand, we are some of the first people in history to ever do this. When I look back, if I'm looking back after the video drops, I'll be like, yo, I did that? And if you get to experience Haiti the way that I've been experiencing it, you're gonna be like, I need to come back and you wanna bring other people. Like I swear to God on everything, I wanna come back and experience this with people that I love and I care about. So since filming this video in 2020, the president of Haiti has been assassinated and then over 800 people have been kidnapped. And so we debated literally for over a year whether or not we were even gonna release this episode. This is unlike any other passport heavy episode that we've done because this is not a travel guide. But I do feel a sense of responsibility to tell you that the danger in Haiti is real. And for the last 12 years, my team and I have dedicated our lives to sharing the beauty of the people, the amazing landscapes, and the history of countries the world often neglects. Well, I'm gonna leave the doom and gloom, the negativity, those clickbait headlines that mainstream media loves, and unfortunately some recent YouTubers, but what we're gonna share is one of the most unique adventures in one of the most beautiful and culturally rich places on earth. So the area of Haiti that we were visiting was Cap Haitian. And then one little fact that most people don't know is that the Dominican Republic and Haiti are literally on the same island. But I can see why most people don't think that. DR is normally promoted as this beautiful beach destination and Haiti is normally depicted in media as despair and destruction. But I just wanted to give you this little geography lesson. And so the only direct flight going there is by Spirit. And normally everyone's always talking about Spirit, but I have the absolute smoothest flight. So I just touched down in Cap Haitian. It's actually a really smooth flight and uh, weather feeling good. Let's get it. We in Haiti, baby. Get in, get in. inauguration flight to cap because they stopped because of covid and a whole bunch of other things and so when we arrived in haiti they had a whole celebration they had members of the tourism board um, i think the ceo of spirit airlines was on the flight maybe that's why everything was so good <laughs> i don't know <laughs> but i'd tell you it was such a warm welcome we here in cap haitian yes. we're at, like in the diplomatic back room here at the airport and normally people exchange business cards, but it's 2020, so no card touching. So what did you say? Give me your IG account, I'll oh, follow that you. Is... IG, so make that sure even to great. follow me back. <laughs> and I don't post you? though, I don't post anything. And this I am is the, the Minister, Minister of, of Tourism. tourism. <laughs> And so I'm gonna talk about it all during this trip, right? I'm gonna talk about safety. I'm gonna talk a little bit about civil unrest. Basically, I'm gonna keep it real, but I'm also gonna show you all of the beautiful things. Now let me bring my energy down a little bit because now this was the most peaceful thing maybe I've done in my entire life. And where I saw the most beautiful stars, literally, it was like I saw a million stars, star-studded all over the sky. I've never seen anything like it in my 34 years of living. And that was on the way to Amiga Island. Yeah, what we about to do? Yeah, we are, we're, we're in Ara, sipping on that cool, you feel me? Five star. 
already okay. long. <laughs> Just landed on the island, about to do this glamping thing. Stars have blown my mind already. Never seen anything like it. And uh, yo, they got a bar. They got some. They food. got a bar. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> Life's good. Now we had one of the most curated experiences that I've ever had. And when you talk about a big reveal, because we landed at night, we we're supposed to arrive during sunset. But you know, things happen. You go with the flow, and then we wouldn't have seen the stars at night. And so we landed. We had food. We had a few drinks. We got to connect with a few people. Hey, hey, hey. Everybody say, oh, oh, oh. Hey, 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 hey. Si je me capé, pendant ma paix chantée, me voyons belle bébé, capé gardé m'nager, comme c'est détonné, tellement moins étonné, moins t'es impressionné, femme ça t'es trop mauvais, tout le monde chante, femme l'a bien campé, ligue en habillé, ligue en j'en suis, ça le fait. And then the beautiful thing was the big reveal in the morning. I don't know if any of us were expecting what we saw in the morning. talking about these curated experiences. I gotta give a big shout out to Haiti Roots because this would not have been possible without them. Chef, mixologist, yoga. So we can do a, a glamping that's all around healing. Or we can do a glamping that's about visiting a historical tour or a culinary tour. We can combine the three. And the idea really and the inspiration of this is to open up to show people the beauty of Haiti's landscape. We have everything here and it's untouched, pristine, primitive for us to develop, creating our own little roads, attracting, showing people what can be done here, showing people what actually is here. All these deserted islands, this is an uninhabited island. They literally brought their whole glamping experience from Port-au-Prince, so I have to drive it, put it on a boat. So this is the reason also, it's a little bit more expensive than most people think, because Haiti is not really set up for tourism. They don't have mass tourism. So you will be one of the first people to experience something like that. And that's what it felt like. It was so uninhibited. And so you sat up, but then, so you're talking about meals, cooked meals, the drinks, the experience, anything that you can imagine, and like a comfortable bed, on an island that literally has nothing. But so many people were there with me. There was like my Haitian crew, Mika Ben, and everybody. I had Mike, I had Chris, everybody. You know, black is a vibe. And anyways, I don't wanna talk about it too much. I want everyone else to share their experience as well. We're in Haiti. We're in Haiti. We're in Haiti. We went island hopping yesterday. You know, we, <laughs> we've been sleeping on the beach and glamping. I've never experienced this in my life and I'm loving it. I'm hooked, you know? So I think once people see the beauty, start experiencing it, it's gonna be a wrap. To be honest, what I experienced, I kind of expected. Mm -hmm. I didn't expect the beauty to be this beautiful <laughs> and this comfortable, but I, you know, this is a Caribbean uh, island, so I know it's gotta be beautiful out there. Mm -hmm. Why are they not showing this on TV? You know what I mean? They always market our people in a, in, a, in a worse way, the so, most desolate way. You might look at this beauty and think like, yo, I can't afford that. But people watching right now might be surprised to know that, yo, this is like an hour flight from Miami. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's so close to the United States, for one. 
and it's very affordable. Like it's truly like the movies and this gives you that same different kind of feel. But getting to sleep here and wake is, up here. Wake up. Like yesterday I didn't even sleep inside of my tent. I just I literally slept right here. I just had a blanket. The weather was so nice. It's beautiful to wake up here. To see the sunrise and the stars, the sunsets and the, the stars. stars. So we don't have light pollution. We don't have. There's no reverb of the light on the ground here because there's not much around us. So the skies are star studded. You're covered by a blanket of stars. It's rare that you see stars like that in your life. Many people don't. There were so many experiences that were truly unforgettable on the island. You have like the local fishermen a hundred feet offshore and like their boats have like the, the sails are made out of like bed sheet type of material and then they're diving in the water like a hundred feet offshore and then coming back on land and selling us like the fish and everything that we were eating so they just pulled up on the canoe when you talk about fresh food straight from the ocean you can't get fresher than this literally you got all your different fish you know, it's saying look crazy. You got the lobster straight out the ocean. Jerry, how much these joints cost? How much they say? Come here. Demi six hundred. Come here. Demi six hundred. Demi six hundred. Uh huh. Toujours, toujours pas les dix. On est venu à moins comme ça deux cent good. Et mettre deux cent good. Deux cent good. Wow. That is insane. Touch it again, do that. One of the reasons we chose Haiti was that. I feel like you can visit a lot of countries and have tourism, mm -hmm. but Haiti is like very complex, yeah. and very rich and deep, and it's so hard to understand the country after like only a few weeks. Yeah. So we wanted to dive deeper and to really live in Haiti. Like after one year, I felt so comfortable and I felt more at home here, but there are still the. F I still had the feeling that there was, there were too many things that I didn't know yeah. about Haiti and also my Creole. I, I I really want to speak Creole fluently. I yeah. want to know more about the say, music. Say say hello. How are you doing? My name is and I'm from Belgium in Creole. Okay. Bon ben bonsoir. Moi je suis Fanny. Bon moi belge. Mais ma prête est en Haïti depuis deux ans, Kounia. Papa les créole net, mais on peut comprendre tout le bagage. Do people look at you like different when they know that you can speak some Creole versus yeah, like a typical sure. like tourist? They're like, yeah, yeah, because most of the time, like for example, yesterday on the boat, uh, they directly started speaking English. And then when I answer in Creole, they're like, huh? <laughs> What's that flower bear <laughs> speaking Creole? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, but definitely it changes their perception yeah. also. And then one of the most beautiful experiences that we had is when we rented the yacht and then we just sailed around the islands. We actually made a pit stop. Shy was like, yo, if you want to do that, it's going to really jack up the price. I was like, yo, we out here living in empty. We gotta do it to the max, right? And so it was just such a beautiful experience. And then we literally sailed back in at sunset. Rebel Lion, Mika Ben were literally putting on a show. I could not make this up how good it felt. But anyways, just come vibe and feel it. Bring out to reach my destiny. Of what people say, three little birds each by my doorstep. What are they doing now? Singing sweet songs, a melody is pure and true. Everybody, let's go sing it. This is my message to you. Let's get the vibe right now. <laughs> Yo, the vibes out here are unmatched. If you can't have a good time in this island behind me, you are not a human being, and that's facts. Like, you could be in the most stressful situations, you come out here, 
experience nature to the fullest. Man, I'm about to go swim for dinner. <laughs> I'm about to go swimming! I was feeling so adventurous, maybe it was a few drinks. I literally swam like a third of a mile, dove off the boat, and swam back to shore. I think I was so excited about dinner. And so I gotta give a big shout out to Shy. So I've known Shy for many years, and then also Jerry. They were actually the ones that really helped put the trip together, specifically Shy. So she has this company called Woco Tribe, and what that does is it creates local experiences with local entrepreneurs, right? And on the side, she's also a boss at Facebook and she's Haitian. So this is something that she truly cares about. And the trip literally would not have happened, you know, without her. So for the last 12 years, you've been asking, how do you make it look so easy? First class flights, five star hotels. The truth is I don't pay the prices regular people do. So you see those $9,000 flights? I routinely pay $1,000 or I even get them for free plus taxes. And those hotels, I'm routinely paying about 50% off what normal people do. So I've created a community for us to show you how to do it. So if you click the link in the description, you're gonna get put on game, let's get it. And another thing that's synonymous with Haiti is voodoo. But the thing is, depending on who you hear that story from, you're gonna get a different perspective. And so one of the beautiful things that we got to experience in Haiti was like the rituals and then just the history. At a dinner just learning about their side of the story, right? Because there's always two sides to the story. Whatever you, do, you believe, I'm the kind of person in the middle is like, okay, let me just hear your side of things. And we had one of the most beautiful experience of like all of us coming together to experience, you know, the most beautiful foods that evening, the, the fire ceremony and just dancing, drinking, celebrating, talking about the future of where we're going. Because the other thing was I brought together my personal friends that are entrepreneurs, the creators, all different types of people making magic happen in this world and we had some of the most beautiful conversations that I've had in my entire life. And I felt because we didn't have cell phone signal on that island. We had a chance to get away from all of the madness. And that's what made this experience so beautiful. The music I was hearing today, I felt something different in my spirit. Like, I, I really felt something different. Like, I really felt something different. And I was like, yeah, from the land, vision bro. and action and money, you can make something special here. You can really make something special. But anyway, toast to Haiti, man. Yeah. Like, big facts, big facts. In big. Haiti, economically, it seems like, oh, they're poor. But what I see is a lot of power and richness. As desolate as it may seem in the cities, I still see a lot of freedom. Mm. Fuck you. Fuck that. Fuck you. <laughs> if you free, you free. Facts. I'd rather be free and I have nothing than live under under bondage. You know what I'm saying? Big facts. Oh, anybody. Yeah. Me what doing, how to do anything. So fuck it. But what I also see is unrefined diamonds. Haiti seems to be still very rich in culture. African culture or voodoo. You know what I mean? These were beautiful religions that were were uh, marketed as something evil. Oh my you know I mean? god. Oh my God! And Catholicism is a watered-down version mm. of voodoo. Oh, big fat, big fat. So, as a first-generation American from Haitian parents, and you all, some of you all, not having any any connection to Haiti, it's really, really, really awesome that you all just opened opened up your minds and said, "Fuck what the media says." Fuck what other people are saying. I'm gonna go do big vibes, <laughs> big shit, you know? big shit, yeah. big shit. Yeah. 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 Without you, our country will crumble because we know that you are the heart and soul of this country. You are the music, you are the infrastructure, you are the hospitality that receives people, you are the food, the land, the agriculture. Without you building these things, you are the wellness that heals people. Big facts. You are the history makers. 
who allow us to pass down our traditions, our culture, the things that we fought for, if you did not preserve these things and pass them down through your songs, through your writing, nobody would know about them. So really, this entire trip is about merging the past and the future, mm. our ancestors, and the legacy that we have a, as a responsibility to push forward. Mm. There you go. Oh, my God. resilient people in the world and that is facts and they were the first to have a successful revolution against western powers right and they have so much pride they also have the biggest fortress in the western hemisphere when you see it citadel it's like almost a tribute to what they've accomplished and when you go see it you're like wow y'all really built this and then so rolling up you just feel a sense of pride. Even if you're not Haitian, you can feel it in your spirit. The most emblematic, iconic building in the Caribbean is in Cape Haitian. It's called the Citadel La Filio. Largest fortress in the Americas and represents so much pride for us as Haitian people and as black people worldwide. Haiti, you know, is a home of the, the only successful slave revolt. You know, they ran out their oppressors. They ran out the colonizers, the French. That's amazing. Now. Because of that, a lot of sanctions were put on Haiti and a lot of hate is really, when people find out more of this stuff that's not talked about in history, mm -hmm. they'll see how egregious it is. And you, you start asking yourself, why are black people in so many places treated so bad? You know, we fought for freedom. We got it, we fought for it, just like America fought for their freedom. Mm -hmm. But then we get taxed, was it like $21 billion? It set this country back so much. As a free man, they said it was built as freedom of a vision. Yep. Like most other things were built from slavery because you got to do it. If you don't do this, you're going to get killed. This was built out of inspiration of what can be for the future to represent something. Facts. Right? Big to facts. represent. We building this out of representation of what the future can be. Big that was 1804. Amen. 200 years ago. And then so exploring, there's a few ways to go up. You can walk, which me and Mike did for a bit, because we started on the horse and I thought like our big asses were too big for the horses, so we walked the rest of the way, or you can take a motorcycle up. We are protected from east by mountain, from west by mountain, from south by mountain. The only side the French could have come to Milo was the north side of it. And then I highly recommend having a guide that really knows the history because it's so interesting to learn so much, right? Because when you grow up in America, you're going to learn about American history the way that American school systems want you to learn about it. You grow up, you know, in uh, the Middle East, they're going to teach you history how they want you to learn. So I always find it important and like critical to learn history from the people, from the country that you're in, so you can get a wide perspective of what is actually truth. And you get to learn the truth when you hear it from different points, just thinking your one narrow-minded way is the way of life, which can never be truth.
case you wanted to feel like royalty or a photo shoot or just feeling really real, it's definitely when we visited the palace and we had lunch. Shout out to Shai for setting this up because I had no idea this was coming. And we had a beautiful welcome. And what made this extra special is this is where Hari Christophe held his seat. And if you don't know anything about the history, he was a former slave and he became a thief only king and so we had really a royal feast there and it's something that i'll truly remember forever and if you ever have the chance to do this this is something that you literally tell your grandkids about had lunch and to know that 200 years ago you know the king and queen of northern Haiti specifically you know Christoph and, and, and his and his wife were you know the, the, the memories and the stories that happened here and just to think and feel about you know being in the same situation and, and, and kind of experiencing this is something I've never never thought I'd be able to do. And our trip to Dong Dong was an absolute madness. When you say this part of the trip wasn't a vacation it was an adventure. The drive from Cap to here, I was like, oh, are we here yet? But when we got there, I was like, yo, this is a true cultural experience. And it was beautiful. So when I said this trip was about to be an adventure, I meant it. The ride up here was about an hour, roller coaster bumpy. And then we actually went up uh, to the caves where the slaves used to hide out. This used to be a hideout like for the slaves when they used to run away and regroup themselves and because this is a very safe place because in the caves no one could reach out to them and they would hide there and practice their cultural stuff you know voodoo and all of that so it was a safe place for them because they wouldn't be able to discover this place you well feel today safe? it's still a spiritual ground yes so you'll see that people still you know come up here and do their rituals you'll see candles in different places and like small altars where they call on their ancestral spirits and you know continue to practice what they had been practicing for over 400 years. Hmm. But yeah, the hike was real. Some of us didn't come prepared out here in Gucci slides and stuff. And then one of the coolest things is when we were coming out the caves, all the kids were coming to hang out, say what up. And after that, we drove a little bit further and then we got to eat raw sugar cane on the street. It's actually my first time ever eating raw sugar cane. It was actually a cool experience. Make sure you got strong teeth because it's a real ass bite, you know, getting the, you're getting the sugar juice out of there. But after a long day, we headed back to Cap. And one of the most beautiful things that I saw was the view from the Santama Hotel. So in Cap Haitian, you have many different options to stay. But when you think about the most beautiful view that I could imagine at sunrise, it was from this hotel. If you saw where Kanye stayed and so many other known people. And the crazy thing though is the price is about $150 a night for the room. So I wasn't, it's not the cheapest place, but it's also not the most expensive place I've ever stayed. Service was good, the food was banging, the pool was good, the vibes is there, and a lot of times you'll see who is who, it's very safe, so I highly, highly recommend staying there if you're visiting Cap. So many nights, we just went out freely, right? We went to some of the restaurants, we were just kicking it, we went out to some of the bars and just feeling, you know, the local culture. And then one of the cool things is Jerry had a cousin inside of Haiti and then one night he actually invited us over for dinner so we just kicked it we had dinner with his family we ate some of the local food and it was just such a beautiful experience and those are some of the experience money can't buy so if you actually have a chance to go with a Haitian friend that has family in Haiti I highly recommend it because you'll have an experience literally money cannot buy
But truly, my favorite thing about the whole trip was just the people, you know, that I was with. You know, Amir, Sean, Johnny, black as a vibe. The trips are not always to Miami, to Vegas. You know, some of these trips that mean the most to me are where we come to the places that we're from. Because Johnny, Johnny was from Haiti and he hadn't had a chance to be back to Haiti. I think he said like since he was like five years old and his mom was like, whoa, don't go. And he's like, ma, I need to go. And then his time and experience and the pictures and everything, I said, his mom was like, yo, I actually need to come back. And she's actually Haitian. I mean, now I get to bring all my stories to her. Like, listen, listen, this is, this is, this is what I found and I'm going back, so <laughs> take, take it or leave it, ma. You know, now it's like, yo, ma, listen, let's let's plan something. You know, you, me, Pop, Jeff, let's plan something, let's go. Hang out with these people, let's go to this area. And now there's things that she probably hasn't seen the last, you know, 20 years she's been. I'm like, yo, we can go to this spot. We can go to this island. Do you know Lulu? You know, do you know Neek? You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> let me show you the people that I met while I was here doing my thing. And now we can really, really enjoy the place that, that you know is home. That this has been not only an incredible trip, but it feels like I'm bringing a piece of the, the country back, like with me, whether it's the, the spirit or the energy and the, the experiences and the time. Like, I mean, you don't get this feeling where you, you lose track of who you are and start to transport into somebody, into, the, into another culture and in a community. And so, you know, Haiti's always been uh, you know, place that I've always appreciated, enjoyed, but I think this, this trip really just did something different. You know? So I'm like, I don't want to leave. <laughs> I asked her, I tell her we trade no, jobs, you know? Like, exactly. I know that every Bro, that was my first time and it's amazing, man. Uh, big shout out to IT Roots and Lolo. You guys brought it. It's, it was just, uh, I don't know. It was something to experience. It was my first time, especially in Haiti, in my own country, so yo. <laughs> It was, it was lit, it was lit. It was just paradise. I needed that, you know, I really needed the time off from, from the chaos of Port-au-Prince, you know, to come to what to me is one of the most beautiful and most vibrating, vibrant part of Haiti, you know. Um, it was really powerful. <laughs> In our world, we go so, uh, so fast and always connected to the internet and, and always just having people come at you for every single second. And, now you get a chance to really do the opposite. And you, know, you don't realize how much you, you need that until, uh, until you actually get a chance to experience it. Everyone says unplugging, but it's the difference between unplugging and then plugging back into another, another culture. I got my coconut, and so it's last day in Haiti, and it's not an official passport heavy video until what? Your boy get his hair cut, so we about to go get that hair cut. And there's all the little things, right? Getting your hair cut in town. You know, just exploring the city and taking in the culture and the people. And one of the top questions I was always just asking people were like, you know, what do you recommend doing while we're here? What are the most beautiful places to do? And that's how you learn out so much more than what you just find on TripAdvisor or someone that's doing a sponsored trip. So when we first was coming to, to Cap, Jerry was like, man, all you need is my uncle and we're good. I was like, man, stop the bullshit. We need more. But we're leaving the airport and I can say a fact, all we need was Uncle Loomis and life is good. We really appreciate you. I think trip would not be the same without you and that's big facts. Thank you and I really appreciate you guys. And you came in my town and you enjoy your time. And I ask you to come back here all the time and I will be here for you anytime, anywhere. Any moment, all right? <laughs> oh, thank, thank you. you. But anyways, I can't say enough about the Haitian people, the culture, the warm welcome. But yo, man, yo, man, let me get that flag, bro. I see sac a fait. Pas fait mon plus plaisir de faire vidéo ça pour nous, mais espérer nous enjoy it. Growing up in Haiti and moving to America, I always hear so many negative things. But as a filmmaker, it brought me so much pride to show off my home. Really happy to take the team back to Haiti and experience it with everyone here. Hope you enjoyed it. Let go, bad bad Yuri in the building. And then big shout out to Talia for producing this episode really killed it. And then big shout out to Alim, Akol, Colin for some of the tracks that we have. I see you, my Haitian brother. 
And then big up, big vibes to Arnold for really constructing this music score with tracks and making it such a cohesive piece and giving this video, or I should say movie, a feeling. And then big up to Nathan. So if you've seen a change in our videos in the last six months, hint Belize movie. So he comes from a video production background, even though he's our COO, we've gone from making like these 25 minute travel guide videos to not giving a fuck how long they are, but just telling authentic stories that truly move people. So big up Nathan, let's get it. And just thank you Haiti, thank you Haitians for accepting us and giving us the most beautiful time. And I'm not gonna shout out all my Haitian friends and all my American friends that came on the trip, but truly the trip is not the same without you. But Haiti, we out. <laughs>